Hey there, just got a quick one before we move on to the next Persona game with Tatsuka in the following video. For today's title, I've been offered by developer Cree Spirit to look at their latest game released a little over a month ago at this time called Tevi. First of all, I do greatly appreciate the review code Cree Spirit and thank you for allowing me to play Tevi, so here I am to offer my feedback. But what exactly is Tevi? Well, let's take a Metroidvania and a Bullet Hell, mix them in a blender to create a weird ass mixture. That's the general idea of Tevi, but it's actually a spiritual successor to another title by Cree Spirit with a similar gameplay style, Rabbi Ribeye. I think that's how it's pronounced anyway. Honestly, I've never played or even heard of it until now, but I hear Rabbi Ribeye does have a bit of a niche following. I doubt I'll soon give it a go for myself, however, so for now, I will be judging Tevi on its own merits. If you've watched my channel for some time now, then you'll know that I'm no stranger to Metroidvania games, more specifically Metroid. But lately, I have been dabbling more into the Castlevania side of Metroidvania titles outside of Symphony of the Night, mainly those in the Advance Collection. That said, I have played others in the genre like Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Axiom Verge, Guacamele, Hollow Knight, and the Shantae series. When done right, games of this style can become some of my absolute favorites. But at the same time, we are getting pretty saturated with Metroidvania titles, especially from the indie scene. Still though, it is a genre that's been going on for a relatively long time, so expecting originality from each game is going to be an impossible ask. But these days, I don't think you could get away with making a Metroidvania without at least something major to stand it out from the rest. That's why I was initially drawn to Tevi when I got asked to review it, because I thought the idea of mixing Metroidvania with your standard bullet hell was a pretty nifty concept. I enjoy the occasional bullet hell shooter, doubly so if it's a game by treasure like Ikaruga or Radiant Silver Gun, but I wasn't sure as to whether or not that was going to be enough to make Tevi one of the all-time greats and a slew of many other Metroidvanias. And does it succeed in any way? It's $30 on both PC and the Nintendo Switch, quite a high price for an indie title, but does anything about the game justify it. Well, let's see what we're getting ourselves into. This would normally be the point where I go over the story, but there's a couple reasons I'm not talking about it in full detail this time. In Tebby, you control a girl called, well, Tebby, a simple human engineer who lives in a world of what are called beastkins. Though they're basically various creatures with human-like qualities, so why bother making Tebby different to begin with? When we first meet her, she's locked in a cell, which she easily breaks out of, and runs into Celia and Sable, an angel and a demon who accompany Tevi as they all escape. Once that's done, the three of them go and see Tevi's father, a man who has an unhealthy and downright perverted obsession with rabbits. Like, this dude is straight up creepy at points. He makes Tevi wear fake bunny ears to blend in, and he's always taking pictures of bunnies, even capturing some quote-unquote provocative ones with his drone camera. Oh god, Tevi's dad's a furry. Quick, hide the cream the rabbit picture. Tevi wants to help her dad research the mystical astral gears though, magical MacGuffins that she, Celia, and Sable must travel the entire world to find. But along the way, they encounter many strong threats who want the gears for themselves, and we slowly learn the origins behind the gears. Yeah, that's about the gist of it, bearing plenty of events and plot twists that occur, as well as additional characters you're introduced to. But you may be wondering why I've been keeping this plot more vague than I usually do. And well, frankly, the story is the weakest aspect of Tevi. Now, the character interactions are okay. You got your friendly locals and the most evil of evil bad guys, most of them fully voiced, albeit only with Japanese dubbing. And I legit believe the connection between Tevi, Celia, and Sable, though I highly question why Celia needs a belt to strap in her bosom. There's a lot of friggin' jokes about her boobs being so big too, which I don't know if it's just more funny to Japanese players than it is to us in the West, but I suppose I would need to ask character designer Ayn Lee, who also worked on the Ruby series. I dig the character portraits in this game thanks to her and with how expressive each of them can be, and I also greatly admire the occasional still shot. I kinda wish these appeared more often because they're so incredibly well drawn and easily one of the game's strong suits. The pixel art for the characters is also fairly well done, right down to the idle animations. I maybe would have preferred to see them emote a little more, like have a mouth or something to show happiness, anger, and sorrow, but that's just a nitpick I have. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, the story. Tevi has a ton of plot and an ass load of cutscenes for a Metroidvania title, and it starts off okay, but unfortunately stopped being interesting for me not too far in when it introduces so many new characters, the politics within the game's world, and super complicated plans by both the heroes and the villains. I did see Tevi all the way to the end and beat it in under 22 hours without a 100% save file. Pretty meaty for a game like this, and you're certainly getting the most out of your 30 bucks. But in my opinion, I think that's way too long for a 
title of this genre, especially when a lot of those hours are dedicated towards the story. I checked out around halfway through and gradually stopped paying attention because I was that uninvested. I wanted to like it more, and I'm sure some people probably would enjoy it, but not me. I'm sorry to say, but I wasn't sucked into the story, and that's why I don't feel especially comfortable talking about it at great length when I A, didn't care for it, and B, struggled to understand some of it. I like the switch up between the angel and demon personalities, though, meaning Sable's the shy, innocent one, while Selly is the assertive, bitchy one. That was a neat touch. But I personally don't need this much story for a Metroidvania. Now scratch that, it's not necessarily how much story is in the game, but the writing within it. Everything is over-explained to the point of fatigue, and several bits of dialogue in each scene could have been cut. But we're stuck listening to the characters prattle on and on for what feels like an eternity. Sadly, I can't say the gameplay knocked my socks off either. Now that's not me stating that Tevi is bad in any way. I didn't run into any hiccups apart from one crash that I don't even remember where it was to begin with, and at no point did anything break. Tevi herself controls pretty well, apart from not being able to drop below platforms, which I thought was severely outdated, but whatever. The combat is slick, with Celia and Sable assisting Tevi with different magic attacks that you can charge up, and using her wrench, Tevi can perform combos, starting with a basic string of hits, but slowly getting more diverse and more powerful as the game goes on. And that's mostly thanks to the sigils you can find throughout the world. They're basically like the charms in Hollow Knight or the badges in a Paper Mario game. Little pins that have different effects in battle, but you can only carry as many as your capacity points will allow. The maximum amount of capacity points can also thankfully be increased by either finding the right potions in hidden spots, or buying them in shops along with more sigils and potions that increase health, magic, and attack power. It's a perfectly functional title and acts like your standard Metroidvania, but that's also kind of the game's problem. It's too by the numbers. I'm not so much talking about the actual exploration of Tevi, where it's non-linear and you can check out areas you're able to access, but there's ultimately only one path to go until you find the next upgrade. That's been an established formula since the dawn of time, and I wouldn't expect that to change. But stop me if you've heard these upgrades before. Boots that make you jump higher, boots that enable double jumping, a bomb that creates little bombs in multiple directions, an air dash that's both a method of attacking and platforming. Can't forget the wall jumping and the jetpack that lets you hover for for a couple of seconds, and a slide maneuver to go through tight passageways. God, the slide in particular drove me nuts because this game absolutely loves to place all of these upgrades and item expansions just barely out of reach, and it was usually the lack of a slide that prevented me from getting them. I know it's fairly routine for Metroidvanias to lock away stuff like that until you're well equipped. Trust me, I played my fair share of them and covered quite a few on this channel, but I don't think I've seen so much item teasing like I have with this one. Sure, you can always go back and get that item expansion later when you finally get the upgrades, but it's honestly better just to wait until endgame before you go out and clean up the map because they hide so many knickknacks and doodads behind these invisible walls, both figuratively and literally. By that point, however, I just wanted to get the game over and done with, and it didn't help that I was in the middle of working on my Spider-Man 2 review at the time either, which I just talked about as of this video's date. So okay, that does kinda suck, but no big deal, right? Just get the power-ups when you finally have a little more freedom to explore. Boy, I wish I had your enthusiasm, because this game also does not keep track of items you discovered, only after you've already collected them for some odd reason. I guess to help with maps already filled out online and seeing how much you've done? But isn't not marking things on the map, like, the total opposite of what you want in a Metroidvania? As I mentioned, this is a pretty long game and with loads of different areas to explore. How could anyone possibly remember where all of these items are without a pen and paper? It feels intentionally archaic, but I don't think it really works in this case. Tevi's also part RPG and she can level up, though this game handles it a bit weird strangely. You don't acquire XP by killing enemies where gathering enough of it makes you go up a level, but instead it's based on boss fights and how much of the map you traverse. Now the map is absolutely chock full of potions to permanently boost your health, MP, CP, and strength as I mentioned before, but then what exactly is the point in killing enemies outside of getting them out of your way? Well, aside from randomly drop crafting materials, not a whole lot. Now don't get me wrong, it's not as if you can go through the whole game without defeating a single enemy unless you maybe want to challenge yourself more, but there are often times where you can just bypass them and not miss out on much. Some enemies can also be kind of annoying to fight to begin with, so why even bother giving them the time of day? And is that a jacked up cactuar the hell? The only two rare drops are the yellow and purple gems that help upgrade your toolkit via crafting, 
Though not only can you find more by just scouring the map and bombing certain blocks, but purchasing enough items in the shops will give you additional gems, so it's not as if you'll go starving for them. With the right materials, you can craft a good number of things, including food to recover health, damage inflicting items, or you can save up to further improve your gear. Tevi from a gameplay perspective does check all of the boxes that you come to expect from a Metroidvania title, and if you enjoy games of that style, you may find something to like about this one. But for me personally, I like my Metroidvanias to have something unique to each of them, something to make me feel like the experience is different. I presume that's what the bullet hell part of the game would have done to satiate my desires, but those are mostly relegated to boss encounters. Sure, you might find a couple of enemies in each area giving you something close to a bullet hell, but if we're talking countless barrages of bullets with little space to dodge, it's primarily the boss fights that have them. Though to be fair, these are the best parts of the game for me, and I genuinely mean that. This is where Tevi finally starts having its own identity, and the difficulty was tough, but doable. Some of them can go on for longer than necessary, but screw it, it's different and I'll take it. My favorite's probably this plant monster due to the sheer scale of the fight. It's just a shame that the Metroidvania aspect of it isn't as, well, original. The pacing's relatively slow at the start too. Takes about an hour or so to get going. I guess I can deal with that, but then the upgrades for Tevi take for damn ever to become available to you. Oh, I'm not talking about the sigils and potions. You'll find plenty of those no problem if you check the right spots, but world traversal is so limited for a majority of the game. I didn't feel like the game started opening up more until the slide and double jump was obtained. When Tevi is fully kitted out, it's admittedly quite enjoyable breezing through previous sections, and the game luckily has plenty of fast travel points to make backtracking less painful, but it still takes so long to get there and not having much purpose to killing enemies didn't help with that either. I realize that I could be coming off as a bit of a Metroidvania snob and being too negative, but this genre of games has been around for a pretty long time and we've now got lots of different options to pick from, so to have something like this that in my opinion doesn't stand up to those other titles is a real pity. I feel mean ripping into this game, and I should stress that it's not bad, just nothing remarkable. Something like Metroid has a bunch of unique power-ups outside of the usual stuff you see in other games within the same genre. Later Castlevanias have more RPG elements and spice things up with each game like a card system or stealing abilities from enemies. Guacamelee changes the combat style to a beat-em-up but still maintains the exploration and upgrades you'd see in a typical Metroidvania, and Shantae can transform into various animals that not only change up progression but enhances the world building. While Tevi does borrow some aspects from each of those titles and other Metroidvanias I haven't brought up, I don't think it does enough to stand on its own two feet outside of the boss battles, and those are legitimately great. No doubt the highlights of the game, but I usually want a little more than that from a Metroidvania. That said, the music is pretty decent, the gameplay is solid enough despite the criticisms I've been given it, and the presentation's fairly adequate. I'm not saying every Metroidvania needs to reinvent the wheel, but Tevi can't just have good boss fights to be placed in the same league as those other Metroidvanias I talked about. There's no harm trying it out for yourself, and if you have a great time playing it, that's awesome. And I'm sure Cree Spirit will appreciate the support. Just wait for a sale if you're not quite sure. My apologies to Cree Spirit that I couldn't quite get along with this game, but I have to be honest with this stuff. I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I brushed over certain things or even lied about them. Nevertheless, I wish all the best for Cree Spirit, and hopefully their next game will be better. Okay, now that that's all said and done, I need to get to work on Persona 5 Tactica, and also record some Persona 3 reload footage soon. I can't wait, it looks so awesome. Ugh, well, thanks anyway for watching, everybody, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Let's take a Metroidvania and a bullet hell, mix them together in a and a bullet hell, put them in together. I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I brushed over certain things or even lied about them. Nevertheless,